Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you on how to use a scientific calculator in solving one sample t-test. If you're not familiar with the stat functions of your calculator, you may visit the link in the description box below for another tutorial. One sample t-test is used to test whether the sample mean of one set of measurements taken on a single population is different from the expected value. The one sample t-test calculates how many standard errors the sample mean is away from the expected value. This could be computed using the formula. Computed t equals sample mean minus expected mean divided by the standard error of the mean. The standard error of the mean can be computed by dividing the standard deviation by the square root of n or number of samples. In one sample t-test, the farther away the mean is from the expected value, the larger the value of t and the less probable it is that the real population mean could be the expected value. Here we have the body lens of 18 samples of a certain fish species taken from a big fish box having 4.3 centimeters as expected mean length. The researcher wanted to find out if the lens of the 18 samples differ from the expected mean which is 4.3 centimeters. To solve the problem, we start by formulating the null hypothesis. In this case, our null hypothesis is the mean length of the Aiden phase samples is not different from the expected mean length, which is 4.3 cm. In other words, sample mean equals expected mean. The second step is to find the sample mean and standard deviation using your scientific calculator. In this case, the sample mean is 4.68 and the standard deviation is 0.218. Now we're ready to compute the standard error by dividing the sample mean with a square root of n, which gives us a standard error value of 0 0.051. After which, we find the computed t by subtracting the expected value from the sample mean divided by the standard error of the mean and we obtained 7.45. This implies that the sample mean is 7.45 standard error away from the expected value. The third step is to find the degrees of freedom or DF. DF is obtained by subtracting 1, which is constant, from the number of samples, which is 18. So our degrees of freedom is 17. Now we shall use the student t distribution table to locate the tabular t value at degrees of freedom 17 and 5% level of significance or 95%. Uh, in this case, the tabular value is 2.1098, or shall we say 2.11. The fourth step is to compare the computed t against tabular t. In this case, the computed t, which is 7.45, is greater than the tabular t, which is 2.11. This implies that we must reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we can say that the sample mean, which is 4.68, is significantly different from the expected mean, which is 4.3 centimeters. For the last step, or step 5, we shall compute the confidence interval. Confidence interval is computed by subtracting the expected value from the sample mean, then either we add or subtract the product of tabular t value and standard error of the mean. By substituting the formula with the values that we have, our upper confidence interval is 0 0.49 and the lower confidence interval is 0 0.27. This means that the sample mean is 95% likely to be between 0 0.27 and 0 0.49 higher than the expected mean, which is 4.3 centimeters. That's all for now. If you have some questions or suggestions, please write this down on the comment section below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss our new uploads. See you soon!